pertaining to salvation, God has made that extremely plain. There's only one Savior. There's only one hope. There's only one that's going to get you to glory, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. He's the one that's coming back to you. He's not going to send Peter down. He's not going to send Mary back. He's not going to send anybody back but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So we are instructed in Ephesians chapter 6. I believe it's verse 10, maybe 11, and I'll, I'll just quickly flip over to that. But I want you to get to John chapter 18. Because that was that meeting between the Pontius Pilate and the Lord Jesus Christ, the arrested Lord Jesus Christ, as it, as it was at that moment. And uh, it says uh, in verse, uh, well, 14. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So that's the first part of that verse, dealing with the very first part of the armor. And in John chapter 18, where, where you should probably be already, and pick it up there in verse uh, 28, we find the whole scene unfolding before us and, and see the conversation here between a lost Gentile uh, man in authority and the lowly Lord Jesus Christ bound before this man and accused of stirring up the nation and, and doing things that were contrary to the law of the Jews. And Pilate's just trying to get to the uh, truth of the matter. You know, you go to the court system, or you come to me, and you're having marriage problems. Are you going to tell me everything that's needed for me to know to make a good judgment on the situation that you're living with? I cannot believe that you're giving me all the truth. I, I mean, when my something I did when I was young, growing up in my household, my mom and dad, and they would ask me a question, I didn't tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, because I, I knew what was coming. I tried to soften the blow as, as quickly as possible uh, by, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I won't do it, I won't do it again, I won't do it again. And this is what happens when we sin against God. Realizing that, okay, if I at least if I confess my sins, <laughs> I, it, it won't be so hard on me. But what the best thing to do is to overcome the sin, so I don't upset my parents anymore, so that I don't upset my heavenly Father anymore, right? So I don't have to confess the same thing over and over and over again. And that besetting sin does not have to be your besetting sin for life. You can overcome these things. Otherwise, what good is the armor of God? If, if our country drafted all the male occupants of fighting age and sent us out into warfare without a single weapon, what do you think would be the result of that if the other side had all the weaponry? Well, you, you can be only picture with that. It would be a bloodbath, and it would be our blood. God has not done that for us. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness now. As Brother Frank mentioned this morning, these things we have now. The thing of it is we don't utilize them. Many people don't think they need to utilize them. Now, I'm okay the way I am. You know, I feel comfortable in my comfort zone. Well, God put us in positions where we have to get out of our comfort zone to be of any use to him. That oftentimes means confrontation with people. Not a heated argument. Not a, not a you know, I'm going to slug fest this thing until I, uh, I'm the conqueror. But to utilize the word of God, we must understand it as it is in truth, what God says it is. And it's true. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. All right, so here's, here's the conversation as it unfolds. We, we did go through this last week. So I'm just going to scoot all the way down to where, uh, G, uh, where Pilate says something to Jesus. Pilate in verse 35 said, Am I a, a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? He's trying to get to the bottom of it. He, want, he wants to know, well, what, what's all this all about? And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. 
If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Now, there's another question from Pilate. Therefore said unto him, Pilate, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. See, Jesus said, in the Old Testament it says, Answer a fool according to his folly. Jesus is dealing with Pilate just that way. You don't get me, Pilate. My own people whom I came to didn't even get me. So he says, well, are you king? He said, well, you're telling me I'm a king. Uh, but to this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. There's another answer to one of your questions this morning, Brother Frank. Don't anybody be intimidated by Brother Frank's question. <laughs> because there are at least a dozen answers that he could be looking for. And if you say one, and it's not the one he's thinking about, well, you know. But just be assured that if you're really wrong, we'll all let you know. Okay? <laughs> and it won't be just Brother Frank. But the, the, the message was definitely great this morning. He even got into preaching mode. That was really exciting to see Brother Frank get into that mode. So, so... He says, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. When Jesus speaks from the word of God, he does not speak to you like I'm speaking to you now. He's not going to show up at your side and whisper sweet nothings into your ear. It's in the scriptures right now. When Jesus has spoken, and this is who God has spoken, has spoken through in these last days, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus Christ, when he has spoken, do you listen? Do you hear it? And when you hear it, does it change you? Does it prick you in the heart? Does it cause you to readjust your lifestyle? To come out of a, 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 of a sinful activity? To come out of a, a, a worthless uh, existence? To to yield your members of your body as servants unto righteousness and not unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Does it have that effect on you? If it does have that effect on you, you are allowing God's word to bring rulership over you. And that's what he wants. He's not going to control you. If God could control you, he would make you be here on time. He would make you do the things he said. He would force you to do that under penalty. He does not deal with us that way. Our fathers would often correct us, and sometimes quite harshly to the point of abuse. And uh, we, we had to listen to them for just to get them to stop. But God doesn't deal with us like that. He does deal with us as children. Because as intelligent as most of us might think we are, we don't know a heck of a lot. But what we do know, what we've come to know, is that God has given us truth. And we can strengthen ourselves with that truth. So in here, he goes on. He came to uh, be a witness to the, to the truth. And uh, those who uh, hear him, his voice, we believe that is true. So Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? So again, I, that's where I left it off last week, and I, and I said, well, I'll tell you what Webster calls truth. In the dictionary of 1828, truth is the conformity to fact or reality. Well, you know, with artificial intelligence on the rise, and I mentioned this a little bit last week, <coughs> are we going to be able ever to watch the news, see something and say, is that real or is that fake? Are we ever going to know that? It's a dangerous thing. People are getting it. They're investing in that so quickly. It, it's, it's like a wildfire. I see it all the time. Uh, you want to get in on this thing, you know, and, and the people are just pouring money into that and they're developing things. Do you know in the book of Revelation there's a beast that's going to come that's uh, made an image to the beast, actually, and the image comes alive. And people are going to bow down to it. And, and, and that's, that's how real it's going to be. It's going to seem like this, 
image came to life. It actually talks and moves. And the people are going to be so convinced that it is true, they're going to follow him. And they're going to worship him. We're not going to be fooled with that. Because we've already read the end of the book. We know what to avoid. We not only know what to avoid what's coming down by governmental decree, we also know how to control the animal that lives in our heart. Now, I call it an animal, but it's just, it's just a... You talk about a roaring lion going about seeking whom to devour. Your heart is sometimes like a roaring lion trying to devour your spirituality. Amen. So we have to be very, very cautious about how we handle truth. Sometimes it's like handling a sword, which the Bible is depicted as being as a sword of the Spirit. One of the weapons that God has provided for us that we might be able to stand. Stand against what? Stand against the evil of our day. It is so great. And it's, it seems like it's a lot worse than it used to be. You just hear it quicker. You hear it faster. Years ago, you probably wouldn't even heard there was a, a warfare going on over in Israel between them and Hamas. Uh, it would probably take on weeks. But, you know, the invention of the telegraph way back then. And then social media, newscasts, I mean, on the spot as it happens. That's how these things go. Just like right now. You're sitting here. So I don't how many milliseconds it takes for my voice to reach your ears, I don't know. Sometimes I can tell when you say amen. How long it takes you to say amen after I said something. That's how many of the mic is on. <laughs> You're right, it's not. Is anybody having trouble hearing me? No. No, I'll turn it around anyway. Okay. Hello, my voice. So conformity, truth is, con that's too loud, brother. So truth is conformity to fact or reality. Exact, now this is, this is important. Exact, not similar, but exact. Accordance with that which is, or has been, or shall be. Right? So, so truth is based on fact. You've been taught, I've been taught, one and one is two. We've learned how to multiply with that, to add, subtract. We've learned to do calculus. We've learned to do uh, all, all the, I call it Alice in Wonderland math. <laughs> all the way up the algorithms and all that kind of stuff out there. The zeros and ones, the binary codes of uh, computer ease those things of that nature, but it's an exact accordance with those things in the past, present, future. Truth is purity from falsehood. Psalm 12, 6 tells us the words of the Lord are pure words. Dave, just bring that down another notch, please. I don't like to hear myself preach to me. The real fact, it's real fact is what it is. Truth is real fact, demonstrable fact, provable fact. The real state of things. Now, by faith, we put our trust in truth. Well, what's truth? Well, you know, the truth is that we do not have all of the facts when we sign insurance forms, contracts. How many of you read your insurance policies from the first word to the last before you signed it? You didn't. You're just trusting that it, if something happens, it's going to be taken care of. And you're making the premium payments on it. How many of you read the contracts when you sign up for a, a, a vehicle? You, know, uh, you may give it a little bit more cost because a few less pages of that. I don't know. Um, your will. Whatever those things are that you have to have a great expenditure for. And that is why signatures are required on these documents. To hold the people who are making the contract accountable if things go wrong or if things aren't the way they're supposed to be. You're having work done on your house, you're hiring somebody, you're, you're hoping that this is going to be what you, what, when I have people, uh, when I hire people to come to work on our house, uh, that's, why I, 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 that's why a lot of stuff doesn't get done at my house because I'm going to do the job the way I want to do the job and my wife gets frustrated over that because she wants it done now. And, but 
I asked him, I said, what's this going to look like when it's all done? Well, this year, okay, could you write that down for me? Because I want it to look like that when you're done. Because I can do a lousy job. I'm not going to pay you to do a lousy job. I'm going to pay you to do the job that I want to see done, that if I were doing it and I was good at it, that's how I want it to be. <laughs> and so you sign those things for accountability. So we don't, we don't know all this stuff. Governments, right? What do we know about our government that's true? Well, we've got the Constitution. We have, you know, we have all of these things here that are laid out for us. How many of the presidents in your lifetime have followed that Constitution to a T? How many of your congressmen that you put in place, no, I didn't vote for that guy, well, neither did I, but somehow they got in there, is, is how do you know when they're telling the truth? You know politicians have a bad rep for not telling the truth. You know, car dealers, they have a bad rep for, you know, used car dealers, a oh, very bad rep. Uh, Congress also is very, very low on the, on the ladder about, you know, that we can trust them. So, so we don't always have the whole truth, and we can't really come to the best conclusion without the facts that we need. So what I want to present to you this morning is that God's truth is truly true, and it can be tested. You can try it out. You can test it. You can put it to uh, uh, effect in your life to see how it comes out. I've done that in my lifetime. I, I was saved back in 1975, so I've, I've got some years uh, on myself now that I've Try to walk with the Lord and do the things and learn things and listen to others teach the word of God. I've been able to discern what sounds biblical, what doesn't sound biblical. And I, I learned how to do this by questioning and trying to grasp it because I want to know. There, there are things in the scriptures that when I read it, I, I'm stymied by them so I can't do anything to teach you about them. But those things I'm praying that God would reveal to me what it is. And I'll bounce it off of some of the other uh, believers just to see what they can come up with. Because I don't know and I don't understand everything that this book has, but the things I do know are the things I can speak about. So God's truth can be tested. In John chapter 7, verse 17, Jesus said, because they were questioning Jesus from the very start when he began his ministry on the earth, says, if any man will do his will, do the Father's will, he shall know of the doctrine, the teaching, whether it be of God. All right? So God, God says, no, put it to the test. He says, if you, uh, you know, we used to hear this all the time. Uh, faith, uh, promise, giving. Uh, you make a deal with God that you'll give so much to missions or you'll give so much to the church. And God will multiply that or he'll somehow make that work. And we kind of ate that because it was coming from the preacher. But it wasn't coming from the Bible. Uh, so a lot of your prosperity teachers and preachers on TV, they fool people by, by they suck them in uh, for donations uh, with these things. You know, they'll send you a piece of uh, the cross that Jesus Christ was crucified on, or you know, the hem of a garment. Uh, all, all of those things, the handkerchief, that uh, whatever, somebody blew their nose in and won't send it to your house. It's just weird stuff that is not biblical. And you have to know enough, you don't get sucked into those kind of things and mess yourself up. And a, a young man came this morning, talking to one of the brethren, and uh, I was told that this, this uh, young man didn't uh, do anything to get saved. So I said, okay. I said, well, did you at least believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Said, of course. Well, that's all that's necessary. Because you can't do anything to be saved. You can start by coming to a church meeting where they believe the Bible and hear truth. That would be helpful. Or at least search it out in the scriptures because the Bible's true. It tells us the good things, the bad things, and everything in between. 
And so we can't do anything to be saved but believe from our heart that Christ is risen from the dead and that he bore our sins in his body and he's coming back for us. Praise the Lord. That's a simplicity that is in Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you need nothing else yeah. but that. It behooves you to come where they uphold the word of God like God does. God holds his word above all his name. And God's got a high and holy name. So you can only imagine where that he elevates his own word. So this is the word of truth. And we need to gird ourselves with it. Because we'll be strengthened by that. We'll be protected by that. We'll be helped greatly by that. But you can test it if you do the things he's telling you to do. Okay, so... Paul was used to write a lot of letters to the different churches. To the church of Prospect, Connecticut. You know, Grace be unto you, peace from the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. And then he goes on and he says, I've heard about your works. And whatever the things might be that he wants to praise you for, praise us for. And then he gets into some details about where we're lacking, what we need to continue doing, what we need to do more of. And we are not supposed to let those words just slip. We're supposed to say, yeah, you know, that is missing in my life. Or, yeah, you know, I could do a lot better with that. Or, you know, uh, boy, I never even saw it that way. But I, I, I really need to get my act together for the Lord and become what God wants me to be. I mean, if, you, if you're if you going to just try to get where I want you to be, you're going to be lacking still. We need to be getting where God wants us to be in our own faith in him. Because that's what we're going to be judged on. You're not, going to, you're not going to be judged on did you meet the pastor's expectations. You're going to be charged on God's expectations. God knows the lazy from the, the hardworking. He knows the ones who are willing and those who are not. He also knows when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake. And he knows if you've been there. All right, so if any man will do his will, he will know the doctrine, whether it be of God. Isn't it great to know truth? Isn't it a wonderful thing to know? Now, you, you got in your car this morning. You didn't even thank God that it started. Well, maybe some of you did. But you don't even understand the workings of the engine inside your, underneath your hood. You don't know all the different machinery and uh, mining that needed to be done to get the materials to make the thing called the piston, or the engine block, or the crankshaft, or the spark plug, or, or the things that were necessary to build a battery. And those of you who are thinking electric vehicle, don't even think about that anymore. I mean, unless you got money to just waste, just go ahead and do that. You'd do better by giving some of that to missions, to propagating the gospel into the world. You'd do much better with that. And this is a pipe dream that it's going to turn into a nightmare if they keep pushing it. So, so just from things I've read that are fact, that people who have owned them have suffered from being a, an owner of one of those vehicles. And it's just not cars, it's buses, and they're, you know, they're thinking about making an airplane like that. And then I can see the military. Hey, we need a charge up here. It doesn't work that way. Now, uh, Psalm 18, verse 30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. Now, your way and my way are not perfect. We still mess I, You know, home projects, are, you know, even at the shop where I work part-time, it's like, yeah, if I mess up, this is not going to look good. Okay? But God's ways are perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler. It's like a shield, like a small shield, to all that those, uh, all those that trust in Him. So His way is perfect. And when Jesus says, "I am the way," well, there's the way. Walk ye in it. Let's 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 be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's imitate Him. My little grandson. We walk around. Well, lately he's been, you know, just. He just takes off now. He used to walk behind me, and if I come over here and look at something in the store or at the house, he comes over here, what the heck, Grandpa? And, and I, I said, I explain it to him like a, like a man would explain it to his son. Now, 
and go over here and do something. We go outside. What are you doing that for, Grandpa? And, and he he'd follow me around like that. He's in learning mode. Now, when a believer stops following the Lord in learning, there's something disconnected there. Because we're considered children, even in our adulthood, to God. He's been around for eternity. We're just come on the scene, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Some of you, maybe 90. I don't know. Some of you 10. I don't know. All right, so, so God's word can be tested. His truth can be tested whether it is so or not. We, and we can walk around with the knowledge that it is so. And that is, that is very, very important. That we understand that it is truth. We don't have to grasp everything that came from God. We certainly don't need to know the whole Bible before we get saved. I mean, I got saved because it says I'm not going to hell. That's why I got saved. I don't want to go to hell. Why don't you want to go to hell? Well, I read what Jesus said about it. And that's why I didn't want to go there. I didn't realize later how much that cost him. I never realized how much later how much I don't even really love him that much. Even though I sing about it with you and tell him I love him. So God's truth can be tested. God's truth is eternal. It will never change. When Jesus said, you're in my hand, talking about the believer, and I am in my Father's hand, and he says, no man can pluck them out of my hand, and I am in my Father's hand, no one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's truth. And you can envision that any way you want. The fact remains is that you don't have to be concerned about it's false. It's true because Jesus said it's true. Me believing it doesn't make it true. It's already true. I get to believe something I don't even really have to prove when it comes to that. I'm inferior to Jesus Christ. I'm inferior to God. I'm broken. He's complete. I'm, I'm tempted. He's not tempted. He died for me. I can't die for me. I can die, but I can't die for me. I, I can't raise myself from the dead. But God's truth is eternal. I know right now, brethren, that, and it doesn't bother me in the least. I know, to think otherwise, I, I know that I have been given the gift of eternal life. And so when problems arise in the church, and there's a bunch of people who, are, you know, they're all up in a tizzy, and, and, and we have a meeting, and we're talking things out, trying to figure out, you know, who's the culprit, who can we point the finger at, how did this take place? I'm of the opinion that every single uh, opposition, every single problem within the body of Jesus Christ can be solved very quickly. Mm -hmm. If all sides lose their pride and whoever has caused the disruption just answers for that by, by apologizing, that should be enough. People should not have to leave this assembly to be satisfied. The word of God is taught. The word of God is preached. The word of God is used, not as a whipping uh, post, but as a guide for your life. And the men that God has placed as teachers and preachers in this assembly do a good job at it. Amen. If you don't avail yourself of it, that's on you. It's not on any of us. So, if God's word can be tested, and if God's word is eternal, that means it, it's, it, it's not going to change. And yet you get a, a new King James Bible. I don't mean a brand new purchased King James. I mean the new King James Version. Wait for the new, new King James Version to come out. They've changed it in thousands of places. They'll say, yeah, but it's easier to read. Well, do you want easier to read or do you want truth? 
If you want easier to read, why bother reading? Go get the Reader's Digest version of the thing. Get good news for modern man if you want easy. I didn't like school. I, I like to play. Some of that's still in me. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't like to labor over the word of God and doctrine, but that's the thing I have been charged to do. So my, a lot of my time is study is, is caught up in studying and, and reading and searching the scriptures so that I can present to you something. And if I can't get it, I can't teach it. It would be foolish for me to try. But God's word is, is fixed. It's, it's fixed. And truth, as I said, comes in many forms. Whatever your occupation, there are certain truths there that you work by. Other Frank Esposito, he, he worked on lighting. There's electricity involved in lighting. If you if you touch the wrong thing, <laughs> so so there's truth about electricity. The power surges through that into you, and it's not good. So then there's a variety of truths applicable to all forms of uh, occupation. But the truth of God is something that can be trusted. They're always changing the textbooks. They're always changing because of new discoveries. The AI is, a, a, again, a great example of something that is going to change a lot of stuff. A very, a very great amount of things. Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2 says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So not only can God's word be tested, God's truth can be tested, and that God's truth is eternal, but God's truth can be trusted. It can be absolutely, you can put your entire faith in it, and you can put all of your confidence in it, you can put all of your trust in it, because it's fixed God's fixed it. He's not going to change it for anybody. And it's forever endures in heaven with him. The Muslims will say, well, you know, yeah, Jesus was a good man. And they say that Muhammad was the last prophet. Do you know what Muhammad wrote in his Quran? He said that the Bible's true and we ought to obey it. But they, something's going wrong with Hamas and Hezbollah and then all these people there. Look, nobody, nobody wants innocent people to be killed. No one wants collateral damage. But when you're an enemy, they're just as wily as the devil, mm -hmm. Hamas and Hezbollah. <coughs> when they put innocent people in front of them right. to die in their place with the hopes that you're not going to want to kill that person. Of course not. Israelites don't want to kill innocent people. They don't want to do that. I, I, I wouldn't yeah. want to do that. I've heard war, atrocities uh, of men so weary from warfare that they just say, they get so, they lose their minds basically, and they just kill innocent people. World War II, Civil War, all that kind of stuff went on. The prison camps and all that stuff. How, how you could do that, I don't know, but I've never been into that kind of a mental state. And I'm thankful that I have not been in a mental state like that. But I, I just don't, I, I can't see how that could, and I think maybe that's one of the things the world is in such an uproar about Israel, because Israel wants to stamp out Hamas. And they want to stamp out Hezbollah so that what took place back in the 7th doesn't happen again. Right. So, prayers for Israel, but prayers for the safety of those that are wrongfully used. But, so again, we're not getting the whole truth, right? We're not getting the whole truth in the news. You turn on one station, it's one truth. You turn on another station, no truth. So we don't know all the facts. We don't, and, and some facts are, they're not even facts at all. Is it? They're fantasy. They're falsehoods. And, and Satan is the father of lies. So how is it that we can trust the word of God? Uh, Psalm 91 Psalm 91 reads 
in a way that we can understand some of this. Verses 1 through 4 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, that, that sounds really comforting. A place to hide, a shadow covering us, something protecting us. That's a really, especially, a, it's, it, it involves the Almighty. Talking about God Almighty here. I will say of the Lord, verse 2, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now what do you mean about cover thee with his feathers and under his wings? Didn't Jesus say, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, how often I would have gathered you under my wings. That's a hen and her chicks. Here it is right here in Psalm. But what's this, the secret place? He that dwelleth in the secret place. Well, we know where that is. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter number one. In Ephesians chapter one, we have a, a, a hiding place. It's not the cleft of the rock, although we sometimes sing about that. It's not the, the harbor and the storm, which there's been songs about that as well. But in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So our hiding place is in a heavenly place. Verse 7 reads, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So in somebody. We're in somebody. That's in Christ Jesus. Go to verse 11, which reads, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we have obtained an inheritance in him. Verse 13 reads, In whom ye also trusted. <coughs> Excuse me. After that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So God has offered the entire population of the world since the time of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, to this very day, and as far as it goes on, until the Lord shuts it all down, his son, as a sacrifice for their sinful life, and to obtain an inheritance undefiled, incorruptible, and that fadeth not away. How many people attending church today, all over, no matter what building they're meeting in, no matter what denomination or are hearing truth like that. Instead of peace be unto thee, go and do thou likewise. There's no salvation in that. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we can trust this. Uh, in John chapter 3, and we'll, we'll finish up with this because I didn't even get into the main body of this message today. John chapter 3 and verse 33 says, He that hath received his testimony, this is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Amen. He that believeth on the Son. Do you believe on the Son of God? Have you called upon him to be your Savior? Do you know that he is your Savior? Or do you just hope that he's your Savior? No. Take a no. K-N-O-W. Know that he is your Savior. He says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, 
but the wrath of God abideth on him. I'll finish up with Revelation 22, verse 6, that Brother Frank will often bring out. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And then he, he, he challenges everyone about taking away or adding to those words. And Brother Frank, this is the verse that Brother Frank often tells us. He, 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. That would be the Spirit of God in you. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. <coughs> hath made God a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Now, brethren, the Apostle John said, I always rejoice in that my children walk in truth. And, and I've not always told the truth when I was a, a boy. I have not uh, always been totally honest to my parents when, I, again, I said this a little bit earlier, uh, for fear of what was going to be done. But you can't hide a single thing from God. Amen. Nothing. There's nothing hid that he doesn't know. That his, his word is a searchlight for you. God doesn't use a searchlight. God doesn't need a searchlight. The light of the word of God is for you to discover you. And if you don't search your own heart with the light of the word of God, you're doing it yourself a great disservice. Because there's things in every one of us that needs to stop. There's things in every one of us that needs to change. We need to become the creatures that God has saved us to become. And that can only happen when we search that book, our hearts. Yes, I know God is going to receive us because of the Lord Jesus Christ, a glorious church without spot, without blemish, just as Jesus was. We're not that yet in our own personal living. God sees us as clothed in his righteousness. God sees us as saved to the day of salvation, until the day of redemption. God sees us through what Jesus Christ has done. And it's like you going to the fair and they have that plywood thing here built up like this with a couple of holes in it, oval-shaped holes. And on the outside of it is painted maybe a picture of a soldier uh, maybe it's an animal, and, and you poke your head through there so your parents can take a picture of it, or your friends can take a picture of it. Hollywood actors do the same thing. They're all hypocrites, but they do it for a living because they're not who they portray. You should not get caught up with those either. But the fact of the matter is we put on an exterior sometimes to fool people. God sees right through that. <laughs> he looks right in the heart. And if our hearts are going to be pure before him, we need to search our hearts that there's no, nothing that defiles there. If I regard iniquity in my heart, says the psalmist, David, God will not hear me. Is there some reason that our prayers don't get answered? Are we just praying for ourselves? Are we praying wrongly? Are we, or is there some iniquity that God sees and he says, I can't answer that. <coughs> He's willing to answer it, isn't he? Isn't he? He's the God of grace and mercy. He saved our wretched souls, brethren. He loves us more than we even could love our own selves. Because he, he loves property. He loves in truth. We love in hypocrisy sometimes. Sometimes we say, I love you. We don't even mean it. Sometimes we tell God, yes, yeah, I'll do this. We don't do that. We're like the prodigal son, where you know, we're like uh, the, the guy who had two sons and told them to go work in the field. One says, I'll go, but he didn't go. And the other said, I'm not going, but he went. That's kind of like my daughter Audra. 
mother is like that. She'll always say, oh, I asked her to do something when she was younger, and she would say, no, and, and she would just go and do it. So, I don't know, she tried to use reverse psychology on me, I guess. And I know she's in the nursery with my grandson, so I'm sure she heard that. And uh, many of you will let her know. I, I understand that, too. So. All right, Father, we give you thanks for the truth. Thank you, Father, that we can wear it as a girdle around our, uh, our core area, the important part of our body that keeps us vertical or causes us to be able to shift and move around and, and uh, live before you, Lord God. But help us with it. Help us to learn how to use it for your honor and glory and for our benefit. Is it only when those things are done for those reasons, Father, is there any uh, good thing that can come out of it? And we thank you, Father, for those in attendance today. We pray, Father, that you bless uh, the rest of their day, the rest of this week, Father. We give them grace in your sight, Lord, as we try to continue to walk in the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's uh, take our hymn one more time. Verse 161, 161. And we'll just sing a couple of verses of this and we'll be dismissed. <coughs> We'll sing the first and the second of our great Savior, 161.